Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Brother Toka's Mystery, to be part 340. We're continuing with our lesson title, Mechanics of Salvation. This will be part 2. But before we embark on our lesson, I want to <coughs> briefly address a question that was uh, brought forth <coughs> as a result of one of our lessons. And the question was, please explain the person of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. And my um, understanding of the question was if there was a distinction between the two. And looking at uh, the background of this, you find that the word Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost come from the same Greek word, which is pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. Yes. So basically, in the original language, you will not have a distinction <clears throat> between the word Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit. It's referring to the same person of the Trinity. It's just that it's in, translated slightly differently by the translators. But every reference to the Holy Ghost or to the Holy Spirit is referring to the same <coughs> person. God, the Holy Spirit. <coughs> now, entering into our lesson, is Numa the same as spirit and wind? Yes. And air. Yes. And in the uh, Hebrew, it's Ruach. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Scripture teaches, <clears throat> when the new birth is experienced, the saint comes into existence as a new creation. 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, Christus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So the scripture tells us you literally become a sentient being as a result of the supernatural act of creation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. What a sentient. Intelligent. Okay having um, the ability to <coughs> make conscious decisions. Okay. Awareness of oneself and therefore everything else. Yes. Having said that, the scripture then goes on <coughs> to let us know that he is literally born as a babe, an infant. First Peter, second chapter, verse two. So he's a member of a new race which has entered into the first stage of existence, infancy. First Peter, Second chapter, verse two. Mm. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. Now, <clears throat> the word sincere there comes from a Greek term, adults, which means uncontaminated, mm. pure. So it's saying, as newborn babes desire the uncontaminated, the pure milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Is the word milk here pablum? Uh, I'd have to look it up. Okay. See, there's a difference between milk and sincere milk. Yes. 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 
the emphasis on this is that the necessity is that it has got to be unadulterated. Mm -hmm. Now, the new believer in organized religion, because generally speaking, that's where the new believer would be found. Yes. Being a babe would have no idea that there's a difference between milk and sincere milk. And they would have no idea that such a thing as pablum exists. They would have no idea that strong meat is there. Yes. So one presumes that their pursuit of, because we're reading here, desire the sincere milk. So their desire is what kicks the, excuse me, it's what moves the Holy Spirit to lead them towards these truths that we're pursuing. Yes. Is there a version of milk that's below milk? In other words, less than sincere or some 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 no okay no all right so milk is milk yes okay in other words the word uses sincere that gives us the requirements for the infant to grow it has to be uncontaminated undistorted word of god otherwise <clears throat> the infant cannot reach the next stage so of its existence so if the infant is hearing the nonsense that passes for teachings in the mega churches well that's clearly not unadulterated milk so therefore he can't grow here's a news flash mm. most of the people in the mega churches are infants yeah even though they've been sitting there for 50 <laughs> because years. they've never been given an adulterated word of god so what we find here that this is the prerequisite for growth It appears to me that people who have sat on the pew for years and years and years tend to believe that they have the fullness of understanding based sure. on the number of years they've been sitting sure. there. Sure, yeah. Sure. Which because they're, led, they're, they're not encouraged. Yeah. They're not given God's perspective. It's all man-centered. But they're using the world's perspective. Of course. Okay, I am a member. I've been a member for 50 years. Mm -hmm. I, I don't... You know, I don't even serve coffee as a member, but I, I've been a member, so therefore I'm a mature member. Sure. It's uh, human thinking. The longer time you put in, mm -hmm. the more mature you become, which is an illusion. Which brings us to the next principle. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the milk of the word <clears throat> with its understanding can only come to the bay by the spirit imparting it. Yes. That's why he's emphasizing it has to be uncontaminated. Yes. Because if there's any degree of impurity, it's not coming from the Spirit. Ephesians, first chapter, verse 15 to 18. Paul gives a prerequisite of how the babe is to pursue obtaining the unadulterated milk of the word. Right. Which is not taught. Can one obtain milk of the word on one's own? Not as a babe. So you need somebody to teach you then, yes. Yes. Okay. So we're understanding you to mean it's not possible for somebody who, to have the, the word and have the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit lead them in comprehension. No. no just, just like a, a human baby, can he feed himself? Mm. No. That's the purpose of the ministry, which we'll get into a little later. Okay. Verse 15. Wherefore... I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. So he's giving them the certification that they are now babes in Christ. They're saved. Okay. <clears throat> he goes on, <clears throat> cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Mm -hmm. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, 
We give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. saints. So you have to have them led in the direction they need to go. They don't know. Sure. And in that respect, they have to be led to the spirit of wisdom and revelation. What is that? Well, basically, he's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sure. And then we understand that it's at that point, because, for want of a better term, the Holy Spirit you know, becomes active in their pursuit, is what I'm trying to yes. say. Yes. We see that it's necessary for that babe to test what he's hearing. And he's able to do this because he has the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Only as he reaches the stage of maturity. Well, of course. Because he has to grow in understanding mm -hmm. before he can test anything. Right. That's where the ministry officers come in. They're protecting him until he reaches that point. So then we prove that the new world structure structure of the church, the corporate structure of the church with the pastor at the head and there's no one else around, is actually antithetical sure. to the it learning deviates of from the, the scripture. Yeah. Totally. But let's go on. A lot we want to cover. <clears throat> so they're instructed to seek the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Mm. Scripture teaches the spirit of wisdom and revelation will impart to the babe his gift and calling in the body of Christ. Yes. Okay, Mr. Jones. So we, we, we've gone from the somebody teaching you so you can receive the milk to now you can on your own if you have the spirit of wisdom revelation you can you can develop you can mature you can grow well, minus a person another person with you only when you reach maturity you get the spirit of wisdom and revelation and he's guiding you but the individual minister has to work in conjunction with the individual so that he can adapt, comprehend, grow in knowledge of what he's received. I'm saying this because I'm, I was going to ask you, well, what about the apostles? How did they this? And I thought, okay, well, they actually walk with Jesus. So right. Like they, he, they have a mainstream connection to the ultimate. So yes. now, mm -hmm. beyond that, we have holy men that have grown after the apostles mm -hmm. and they he must seek the wisdom of the holy spirit to direct them to direct him in knowledge and understanding yes turn to ephesians fourth chapter and then we're going to go on ephesians fourth chapter lays it all out okay. verse 11, starting in verse 11. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Right. So you have all of these, they are all spirit-filled. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, building up the babes to a position of maturity. If the babe didn't have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, you couldn't teach him anything. Exactly. That's the point. That's being made. That's He's being made. instructed to grow in understanding the spirit within him until he reaches a state of maturity where he sure. doesn't need the teachers anymore. Sure. He can go on. This is the point that he's making. Yes. Okay. Well, Mr. Jones, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I had an epiphany and I had to realize my own story. I'm at a position where now I can understand Scripture. I can tell tell the tr from truth and error, and that's all because of you. You brought me to the place where I'm at right now, Mr. Jones. And thank God for you that I met you and that we're continuing to do this. But the thing of it is, to see, I can't discount this. I didn't mind the truths that I understand my el myself. You did and shared them with me. So therefore, now we go forward. But so I have to, I have to make that 
that proclamation, that, that, that recognition of my own story is fulfilled because of you, Mr. Jones. You have a commitment that's admirable, and we all trust you for continuing to mine the, the spirit of wisdom revelation out of, out of Scripture and, and present it to us that we can discuss and fellowship and hopefully mature and get closer to completion. Well, what we're doing here basically is preparing for the influx of those yep. need to receive what we've Absolutely. been given. Absolutely. And I believe the Lord is making that emphatic <coughs> by the things we're experiencing. Sure. Everything falls into place Absolutely. in a unity. So <coughs> what you find here, this is the purpose of it. It's not just one individual ministry. It's numerous ministries that are affecting the babe right. who has the spirit in him. Right giving him comprehension of the overall picture of God. Through receiving multiple aspects yes. of the overall spirit. Yeah, he's not being limited to, well, we believe this denomination believes this. That, that, that whole thing is a distortion. Sure. Really a pollution of uh, the purity of what God has intended for the church to experience. But let's go on. Turn to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, Verse 4 to 7. First Corinthians 12 chapter 4 to 7. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations with the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. <clears throat> but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, what we find here, there is a division within the Trinity of developing the babe to maturity. The scripture is giving us the understanding that is the Holy Spirit which manifests the gifts. It is the Lord <clears throat> who selects the saints calling and it is the Father who works all this out to bring fruit in the life of the saint. Example, 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter, verse 5 to 6. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers, by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? The Lord selects the calling. Mm. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the, in the increase. <clears throat> Holy Spirit's gifts, the calling of the ministry office, the Father takes and works to bear fruit through that life. Selectively. Each member of the Godhead has a specific function in the saint's life to bring about the result. Each member of the Godhead has a specific function in the saint's life. Yes. Can you elucidate? Turn back, 1 Corinthians 12 chapter. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Here he's talking about the gifts. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has told charge of what gift you're going to operate in. <clears throat> then he goes on. 
Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit, not by the Father, okay. not by the Son, but by the Spirit. One is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit. To another faith, by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. To another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh at one in the self same Spirit, 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 dividing to every man severally as he will. The gifts are a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the saints. Not a manifestation of the Father, not a manifestation of the Son, a manifestation of the Spirit. Now it is the Son that determines your calling. Turn to Galatians, first chapter. Let me ask a quick question. Sure. The Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation is the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay. Where are we going? Galatians, first chapter. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> That's amazing. Perfect amazing. timing. <laughs> little, <laughs> little seasoning right there. <laughs> Verse 1. 1-1. One, one. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ. And God the Father who raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. The Lord is the one that gives you your calling. Mm -hmm. You can read the apostle, prophet, teacher, whatever it is. Even So we see each one in the Holy Trinity as a place in the life of the saint. When the saint starts off on a path, it's ordained for him to grow in comprehension of what's taking place mm. by the ministers giving you understanding of what you're experiencing. Is it true to say that the receipt of the spirit of wisdom and revelation necessarily comes at the point where the person gets the gifts, which of course is the point at which the person is baptized into the body by the spirit? Do all those things happen at the same time? Can they be spread out over No, it depends years? on the individual. The maturity of the individual. Each one's life is unique. Right. And in that respect, what's primary of importance is for the infant, the babe, to get the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, he's going to operate off his intellect. Yes. 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 There's no choice. Yes. And so what you have today is a... <coughs> miscarriage of holy justice because you got the denomination telling you you don't need to get baptism in the Holy Spirit the gifts are done away right. all the rest is this is right. criminal right. so spiritual yeah. from what the scripture is laying out as the development of the saint so what you have now the church is literally crippled can't function people don't have any respect for it because there's no power no knowledge Muslims don't respect Christians. They look at Christians as somebody who doesn't even know what they believe in, yes. why they believe what they profess to believe. And that's led directly to the feet of leadership. Anyway, let's go on. So we see <clears throat> Scripture teaches the saints obedience to the indwelling spirit's leading will enable him to reach his state of maturity in the body of Christ. I'm going to repeat that. The saint's obedience to the indwelling spirit's leading will enable him to reach the state of maturity in the body of Christ. The body of Christ was designed to be a community separated from the influences of the world so that the saint would have a place in which he could grow to maturity. He would have spirit-filled ministers around him. He would be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. He would have the ability to experience things and get the comprehension of what he's experiencing so that he could reach a state of maturity so that he'd find his place in the body of Christ. 
Well, that was all went by the boards when the apostles passed away. Turn to the Gospel of John, the 16th chapter, verse 13 to 15. be it when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth where he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and to show it unto you all things that the father hath of mine therefore said I he will take of mine and show it unto you what's he saying here the Holy Spirit spirit of wisdom and revelation in the infant imparts revelation knowledge to the infant but the infant doesn't understand so the minister that around him was spirit filled can give him an understanding on an individual scale well son the Holy Spirit is moving in you because you've been called to be a prophet so you go down this path and the spirit of prophecy will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow in you the Holy Spirit is in, imbued you with the ministry of faith. You can be able to move mountains. You're going to, need to do great things. <clears throat> so you open your life and you're directed into each individual that has been designed and is called a specific thing is given the ability to function in that level of spiritual comprehension each one is unique each one is designed to grow to a point where he fits into the body of Christ strengthening the body of Christ so that the body of Christ becomes the dominant focal point in this world of darkness would you reiterate here that this is true for the babe to the degree that the babe allows himself to be led by the Holy Spirit and doesn't uh, and doesn't uh, uh, try to dominate the leading of the Holy Spirit by his intellectual exercise. Certainly. And the reason I'm saying this is because we see this over and over and over and over again and it's, it's just amazing to me how people claim that they've heard the Holy Spirit move them this way or that way but then they don't follow the path. Well, basically because they're on their own. They have to be guided by a spirit-filled individual who's mature and can give them understanding. They don't know the difference between the carnal and the spiritual. You have people on a guilt trip. Oh, I sin. I'm, I'm not going to be able to be forgiven. Or you got emotional problems or this or that. The body of Christ is neutralized in developing the ministry offices. Yes. And it's because, as you were just now pointed out, they feel guilty for something, so they will not ask. They won't ask for help. It's asking you shall receive. So if you just put the principle in, in motion, then, then all of a sudden the results will, will manifest mm -hmm. if you ask. Yes, they're not encouraged to ask. Turn back to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Here, again, we see the plan of God as the way the, the, the body of Christ was to develop. Five minutes. Okay. Starting in verse 11. <coughs> And he gave some apostles and some prophets. So you have the two main offices that don't even, aren't even recognized in organized religion. And some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying building up of the body of Christ. The ministry offices are there to develop the babe to the state of maturity. Till, till, 
we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge, knowledge, knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, the word perfect there is a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, that each member of the body reaches a state of maturity for which he was designed to operate. That, the word henceforth is in italics, I need to read it. That we no more, be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I'm going to shut it down right there. The body of Christ is stunted and crippled because it never gets past the, start, the place of infancy. It never grows to comprehend the plan of God. Each individual has no idea of his purpose, of even the, the design of the body of Christ. They think a building, a church building, is the end all and the be all of all. And so they never reach a point of understanding. They remain in ignorance. And that's the purpose of organized religion, to keep people ignorant. Don't ask questions. Don't grow. Don't mature. Believe that all of this stuff has passed away. Doesn't matter anymore. And then you focus on the man-made pursuits that the uh, so-called leadership is dangling in front of people. Uh, revisionism, uh, Calvinism, Lutheranism, <coughs> which is the works of men, has nothing to do with God. And so you have what you have today. It's a, it's a masterful work of the enemy yes. to cripple the body of Christ. Amen.